This is the Crab Nebula, one of the most famous astronomical objects in the night sky, and it has just been imaged by the $10 billion telescope JWST. This nebula is the remnant of a supernova that exploded in 1054. As this star exploded at the end of its life, it was bright enough to be seen with the naked eye back then, and there are many reports of it appearing in the sky in the 11th century. It's continued to grow, expand, and evolve since then, and now this ancient stellar relic has been imaged by the most advanced telescope in space. This is one of the most studied supernova remnants, and was formed when a star ran out of fuel to power the nuclear fusion happening in its core. This led to a loss of outward pressure, and the star collapsed in on itself, resulting in an explosion visible on Earth that left behind this incredible nebula. It's an enormous cloud of space dust, gas, and debris from the exploded star, creating a gorgeous array of colors and textures visible in this JWST image. It's one of the most studied deep space objects since it's relatively nearby at 6,500 light years, and a great target for backyard astronomers too, and can be seen looking stunning even in small personal telescopes. At the centre of the nebula are two stars, one of which is the one that exploded to give the nebula itself. It's now a compact neutron star, spinning fast and emitting powerful jets of radiation as it spins. We call this kind of star a pulsar, and this particular one is called the Crab Pulsar. Pulsars are really interesting objects that are useful for lots of different things in astronomy, including being used in the detection of gravitational waves. I have a video all about that use for them if you'd like to hear more about that, but here we're sticking to the Crab Nebula in all its glory. Before it exploded, the Crab Pulsar was a more regular looking star that was between 9 and 11 times the mass of our Sun. We know this because stars with a lower mass than this typically don't produce supernova explosions, while stars heavier than this mass range produce nebulae with different chemical compositions. We also do know that it was a core collapse supernova that produced the Crab Nebula, instead of accreting matter from a binary friend star, because that wouldn't leave a pulsar as a remnant, and we definitely have a pulsar here. The image does look similar to the older, famous image of the Crab Nebula that was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2005, almost 20 years before this JWST image. While it is still stunning, the textures and details just don't quite pop as much as they do in the JWST image, and the improvements are really noticeable. Interestingly, if we line up the background stars in the two images, we can actually see how the nebula has expanded in the last 18 years. Some of the shapes have changed subtly and moved outwards. The dust and gas here is moving very fast, but since the distances here are so incredibly large, it still only looks like small changes from our vantage point here on Earth. Remember that the wavelengths of the two images are different too. The Hubble one is a visible light image, and the JWST one is infrared, so that also contributes a little bit to the different look of the two images. In JWST, the reds and oranges are a cage-like structure of gassy filaments. This is beautiful, and similar to the structures that we can see in the Hubble image. In the central regions though, we can see light emitted from grains of dust in yellows and greens, and these puffy, large-scale, loopy structures are being mapped here by JWST for the very first time. The smoky wisps and clouds we can see throughout the interior of the nebula are being seen for the first time here too, and this material is visible thanks to something called synchrotron radiation. This is emission caused by charged particles like electrons, moving around the nebula at speeds comparable to the speed of light, and JWST is observing that radiation here. This all happens because of the Crab Pulsar at the centre of all of this. The rapidly moving star accelerates these particles thanks to its strong magnetic field. In fact, we can even see this magnetic field here in some sense, traced by the thin white ribbons of radiation grouped closely together near the centre. The synchrotron radiation emits light all across the electromagnetic spectrum, but of course we're only seeing the infrared portion of this, and it's particularly vibrant in the NERCAM data. This brand new JWST image is a composite image, made with data from both the near-infrared and mid-infrared ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means two of JWST's instruments were used to take this image, with both NERCAM and MIRI involved. The sensitivity and incredible resolution of JWST is giving us new insight and knowledge about this ever-evolving object, helping us understand the conditions, behaviour, and ongoing physics happening in this supernova remnant. And this image is also the first complete map of dust distribution in the Crab Nebula. I know dust doesn't sound exciting, but for astronomers it's a very important thing to understand. 
The supernova itself and the behavior of the pulsar that it left behind sculpted a lot of the shapes that we can see in the nebula. The pinching of the waist of the nebula, where it appears thinner, was likely caused by a thick belt of dust confining the winds and radiation from the supernova. This leads to longer filaments in the upper right hand side of the nebula when compared to elsewhere. Here, no such dust restricted the winds and allowed these long structures to be carved from the dust and the gas. Wherever the gas looks bluer in the nebula, this is caused by heavier elements such as iron being present in the structure of the crab. As with most JWST images, even the dark sky behind the main object isn't completely dark and isn't boring at all. Here we can see many more stars and even some galaxies sneaking into the image, so be sure to download the full resolution from the link in the description, explore them for yourselves, and be sure to let me know if you find anything particularly interesting. Excitingly, in the next couple of years we'll be pointing Hubble back at this nebula too. This will give us a more up-to-date, high-resolution, visible light image to compare to the JWST data, and that will be an exciting image to see and compare. Leave any questions you have in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!